In a couple previous tutorials, I covered the basics of using a plugin called Motion Master, and I showed you how you can create a motion blur effect for an object in your scene within Daz Studio by using Motion Master. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a circumstance where you might have an object that is going behind another object, which is going to produce a motion trail that's going to be going behind an object in the foreground. And in that case, you have to create a mask. And I'm going to show you how to take care of that. And this is a built-in feature within Motion Master. This was a pretty thoughtful feature actually to include this as a feature in Motion Master to enable you to take care of a problem like this without too much difficulty at all. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that right now. Now what I've done here is I've already created my objects. And here's the start of the object. Whoops, and actually I'm going to have to redo this again anyway. So I'm just going to redo this, all right, because I just messed that up. But I was going to just show you what was taking place here. But in order to set this up here, I have my sphere selected now. And I've already covered this, but we're going to do this again. And this is important, though, because in the start motion end point, we're going to have the sphere going behind the cylinder. So I'm going to click on the sphere, and I'm going to click Accept here. Now we have an option to choose the cylinder here as the mask node for the motion trail. And this is important. The cylinder is going to be in front of the motion trail here, so we have to check that to create a mask that we can use to fix that problem. So I'm going to hit Accept there, and then I'm going to hit OK to confirm that. And then now I'm going to move my sphere back here to create my motion path. So we're going to click Set Motion Start. I'm going to click OK. From here, I can choose a folder to save that in, and I'm going to save this in test. I'm going to click OK untack this so I can scroll down to the bottom here and I'm just going to choose render motion. Now I did this already but I'm just going to click yes to do it again and as that's going what I'm going to do is pause and when it's done creating the layers I'll resume the video. So we're done creating the layers now and just going to open up my photo viewer to show you what we have. Now this is the saved render. Now Motion Master doesn't create a saved render. I rendered the scene and saved this before I created the Motion Master layers. So this is just our original render. And then this was created by Motion Master. This is our object mask for the sphere. And then we have, this is the motion trail. Right here is the motion trail mask. And then we have our object mask here. This is the static mask. that's going to mask out the motion trail to include this object in the foreground. And now that we have all those images, all we have to do is composite. And I'm going to minimize as studio, we're going to bring up the GIMP here, and this is my folder containing my files. And I'm going to start off by loading up the original render. Then in my layers panel here, we're going to load up that motion right there. Now this is a pretty intense motion blur. And I made this intense to ensure that it made it behind the cylinder here, but this is a little too intense, but we can take care of that. So I'm going to set the mode to screen here, All right, and then I'm going to just turn down the opacity to maybe 60% right there, like that. But take a look at what happened here. Let me move this layer out of the way here, the layers panel out of the way. We have the motion trail overlapping our cylinder, and we don't want that. So to take care of that, it's not difficult to do. What I have to do is load up the static mask, and that would be the mask of this cylinder here. And I'm going to do a control A to select everything. I'm going to do a control X to cut that. And I can delete this now. I'll delete that layer. And then I'm going to come down here and right click. And then I'm going to choose add layer mask. Do this right here. And then from here, I have my confirmation dialog. I'm just going to click add. All right. And then here we have our mask layer original image right here. That's the mask layer. And then I can do a control V to paste that static mask into there and anchor that. And it's as easy as that. If we take a look, we've taken care of it. Now we have our motion trail behind the cylinder.